So many of our lives, and I'm definitely guilty of it, are really busy and hectic and hour to hour, next meeting to next meeting, client to client, whatever the case must be. But it's, it's hectic and it's busy. And a lot of my decision making is done quickly. And sorry for the, the fallback on the phone. It, this actually is like an exercise just holding the phone up. I tell you, my arm gets tired. Anyway, a lot of my decision making is can be done quickly. And I find that decision making in general, when it's made quickly, is patterns in your head that you just go back to. And then you just rely on that to make your help make your decisions. And not until you can really sit back and reflect on your actions from previous interactions or previous experiences or things can you really change your actions to make a different decision um, so take this time and really sit down and think over some of the decisions you've made in your work life in your personal life and decisions that you've made for your future and set up and really reflect on them and see if it's something that you want to go forward with or if you want to change or take this time right now to look at your patterns. We all have them. And it's all about breaking patterns and stepping out of your comfort zone and evolving and growing. And maybe take one pattern and just focus on, or two if you can, and really try to dissect that and reflect and take ownership of that pattern. It has nothing to do with anybody else. It all stems from inside of you and it comes from you. Not from your partner, not from your best friend, not from your parents, not from your family members. It comes deep inside of you. And really open up to that and be vulnerable and admit to it. And try to break it. There has to be some, you, okay, you may have done so much evolving. I know the last three years I've worked on a few patterns. I've really tried to break them and I have and I've evolved. But guess what? That doesn't mean I'm done. You still evolve and you still have to work on it. It's an everyday process. It's an everyday thing. And then I'm going to dig a little bit deeper and try to find another pattern or something else that may be a part of that or stems where it stems from originally. Whatever it is, take this time to work on you and really open up to it and really be vulnerable and I know it can be hard but you have the time and not only do you have the time more than likely you have the alone time and the isolation to really get vulnerable and scream and yell and cry and release it but at the same time of all of that remember to be kind to yourself because even being vulnerable and admitting that you want to break something or even taking the accountability and the responsibility of an action you may have done right there is doing so good for yourself it's not putting yourself down it's not telling yourself that you're horrible or you should be this way or that way and it's definitely not comparing yourself to somebody else it's truly being kind to yourself because you're trying to change that and you're trying to better yourself and evolve so get out of those quick decision makings and get out of that pattern that wheel and really dig deep and try to break and try to recognize other patterns that are in you and maybe are the reasons why you're choosing the same jobs or to be taken advantage of at work or you're choosing the same type of partners or you're in a long-term relationship or a marriage and you're doing something that you'd rather be doing better whatever it is you know what I'm talking about we all know um, and give yourself that love give yourself that love and give yourself that security and that strength and that support and go for it now is the time okay i took off my sunglasses to make this a little bit more personal with you um i encourage you download the app strava str strava <laughs> And it's an app that there's a free version and then there's a premium. So just get the free version. And it's an app that calculates and records your miles. You can use it for walking, running, or cycling. And you can follow each other. So I'm on it. I'm either under Brianna, I think it's under Brianna Stockton. Follow me and you can like things and I will see that you follow me. I'll follow you back. And then when I see that you're on walks, I can like it or whatever. Or you can like it any which way or you don't even have to record it and post it but you can just record your mileage and then not post it for everyone to see but just so you have something for a log and a record and then looking back at this or when we're out of quarantine we can go back into 
somewhat of a daily routine that you're a bit used to, that you may not have as much time to go on walks, you can look back and realize like, wow, I was going on all those walks and it felt so good. Let me make that time for those walks. Let me carve out time because actually it's a priority now. You know, explore right now. Explore with fitness and with health and also just explore with your own time. Go on a walk by yourself. Maybe you're living with roommates or living with family or a partner and get out. Don't forget your mask. Always bring your mask. But um, just get out for your own insanity or sanity. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, I know these walks are really helpful for me. I can just, I'll stop and I'll sit and I'll think or I'll just speed walk and get my heart rate up or I'll just leisurely walk and just stroll because I have the time. But whatever it is, I hold myself accountable with this app and I record my mileage. I haven't been posting them lately because I've just been recording them in my own book because I always record everything. Part of my job and what I teach is accountability. So um, I'll start posting them. Even if it's a one mile, even if it's a two mile or longer, I'll post them and I'll title them whatever they are, dog walk or you know, Monday walk, Tuesday walk, whatever the case is. And you can title yours, accountability, Monday walk, or, you know, Brianna accountability, whatever the case is, just post them and let's hold each other accountable. Get out of, get out of the house and get on a walk and get some nature and fresh air. Okay, walk out of your front door, set your timer or your Apple watch or whatever it is, run for a minute, walk for a minute, run for a minute, walk for a minute, do that for 10 minutes, and then walk for another five minutes, then turn around, go right back, and run for a minute, lunge for a minute, run for a minute, lunge for a minute, for another 10 minutes, and then walk that last five minutes home. What a great workout, get out and do it, I encourage you. Okay, rinse my face real quick. Bam, then towel dry it. Okay. Whew, okay. Nice. Um, and as it dries, it starts to kind of like, I don't know, get like a, it dries and pulls your skin in. So it almost feels like a little facelift, a do it yourself facelift. Okay. And don't worry about it if it gets in your hair or anything, because it just rinses right out. And yes, I am a vegan, um, but I do do honey. Honey is great for allergies which I never had allergies. I developed them the first time I moved to LA, um, which I could have developed them regardless in my adulthood, living wherever, but I developed them for the first time when I was living there in Los Angeles. And a spoonful of local honey especially is great for allergy season. All right. So, a little bit left over. I'm gonna put it on the top of my hands because I don't know about you, but um, <laughs> my hands are like looking old and worn out and wrinkly. So anything that can help give them that little oof and that little lift, high five to it. Okay, 20 minutes later and I'm starving, so I need to get this off. Um, sorry for the noise of the water, but I kind of want it warm a little bit. So a little bit was dripping. I don't see, know if you can see, I tapped it with a towel, but um, God, it comes right off, off my hands. It's so nice. It truly is a great do-it-yourself little um, face mask. Okay, going in. Like I said, I prefer to do this in the shower, which I do need to take a shower. Um, but I'm doing it here over the sink. When you get the little flavor in your mouth, it's so sweet and tasty. 
Okay, almost done. Just make sure you get around your face every little part that you would think that might be um, still sticky. Whew. It feels so nice. Okay, go do your uh, honey mask. So again, real quickly, all I did was steam chopped up sweet potatoes, the sweet potato uh, organic hannas, steamed them, and then once they were steamed, I put them in a the food processor, and I added literally, again, no measurements, here's a garlic powder, here is onion powder, boop, boop, <laughs> no joke. Salt, definitely more of these two than salt, if that helps you with measurement. Um, and then I added maple syrup. Last time I used agave, and I used maple syrup this time, which I think is a bit stickier, so it might help hold together. And I put it on parchment, 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 parchment paper, <laughs> which was so much more helpful to flip it. So they were in the oven for 30 minutes and I flipped it. They've been in the oven for about 10. And then now I'm gonna bring them out and I'm gonna put some um, toppings on that we wanna cook, okay? So bear with me for a sec. Okay, we have another one in there which is a bit thicker. So these are the two personalized sized ones. It smells so damn good. And even the batter of when you're making the food processor, which you can also use a blender if you don't have a food processor. It is so good. It's like um, the idea of mashed potatoes, but with the maple, it's like a bit thicker and stickier. And it's really good. Um, Retcha made a great point. She was like, we should make patties, just make them and then freeze them to have them for later. So good idea. Maybe we'll do that. So this is tomato, um, I guess, tomato sauce, only tomato. Again, this is a brand that has sea salt rather than table salt. So look at those ingredients. I don't care about the fats, the sugars, the calories, whatever. I care about the ingredients. Not that you're serving me dinner, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Okay, tomato sauce. Yum. And then I'm gonna add some fresh garlic. We both love garlic, so that's great. I mean, who doesn't like garlic? Well, actually, there's quite a few of you out there. A few of you. <laughs> okay, garlic, some sweet onion. And then I'm gonna add some, you want all the same things I want, right? Mm -hmm. Some broccoli. Yum. And then I'm gonna add some jalapeno. Not so much on Retchens, but more on mine. Okay. And then this is gonna go back into the oven for, I would say anywhere between like five, well, a few minutes, I don't know, I'll tell you. And then we're gonna pull it out and then we're gonna add other toppings. So I'm gonna put it on here. Take that away. Oh my God, it looks so good. It smells so good. So again, this is the one that was just the tomato sauce. If I would have realized we had the majestic garlic spread earlier, you better believe that. It would certainly be on here. Um, anyway, okay. So real quickly, let me put this aside. I am gonna put fresh avocado. Yum. Fresh avocado in here. I like, I mean, even if you had like a garlic oil or something, that would be good to drizzle. I like to do my pizzas in like a vinegar, like a citrus, acidic. 
that would be good. I mean, anything is good. You do you, do you. Do your own pizza. But this crust is bomb. Gluten-free, dairy-free, um, no oils, and it's amazing. All right, Retchen, we did avocado, arugula. Yeah? Do you want salt and pepper? Oh, yeah. Salt and pepper. Shit. Okay. Crack some black pepper. Some salt. And oh, balsamic. I think I'm gonna drizzle over my arugula. Damn, girl. We good. Mm -hmm. Wednesday night pizza night. All right. So there are two personal pizzas. And believe that, I will do my drizzle of the balsamic but I'm not gonna take you with me to find it, whether it's in the fridge or in there, because Gretchen reorganized the cabinets, which I'm very grateful for, but I don't know where everything is. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, good job. One more thing. This is Miyoko's mozzarella uh, cheese. It's kind of bland to me, to be honest, but it is good on top of this pizza. I don't like to put it in the oven. It's, it doesn't melt. I like it just uh, crumbled on top or plant-based feta. I love crumbled on top. You can also do cheese, you guys. No problem at all. Make sure it's dairy-free. I am definitely enjoying the innocence of life right now. Um, and not being so rushed and not being so hectic and not so being on the go and not being glued to technology and my phone and just really truly being present and still. I'm really enjoying that. So I'm wondering, um, or I'm kind of outlining, outlining what I'm gonna bring with me into life again when we get out of quarantine. And what are you gonna bring? I am interested. Um, I hope to bring some more presence and some more stillness to my everyday life when we go back. And just, not so hectic and not so quick and not so fast and not so consumed with technology in general. Um, also, I think I'm gonna have a little hard time communicating with people. So it's gonna be good practice to take away the phone because it's such a like um, wall and a barrier between you and the other person. So take away that. I'm gonna have to be forced to look at somebody and talk to them, which I love, but even we've been so distant from it in our world in general, and then now so in quarantine, I feel like my main communication is with myself and recording to you or just like talking out loud every day to myself. Like I'm loving it, I truly am. There's hard days. I feel like I went over the hardest hump so far. Maybe you'll come back, I don't know, but there are hard days, but I'm truly enjoying this. And I'm having a lot of fun and I love going on these long walks. Like I'm doing marathons of walks and short walks, but I'm loving it all. But when it comes back to real life, like how awkward are we gonna be with one another? I can't wait to see everybody. I can't wait to give them hugs. And maybe they'll just be completely natural, but it's also like, whoa, how do we do this? Like, can I just go to the corner and talk to myself and then come right back and answer that question for you? I don't know. Um, but anyway, my point of my morning reach out to you is, what are you gonna bring with you into your so-called normal life, going back into the world without quarantine? What from quarantine have you noticed that you enjoy or that you miss that we used to have or that you used to practice and you don't anymore? So what are you gonna do? Tell me, share with me. No joke, find a tree and hug a tree. It feels so good. <laughs> Get outside, find that tree, find your post in the backyard, just hug something. I know it sounds weird, but just do it. What are you gonna lose? <laughs>